Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. We're back at PixCore Studios in Petaluma, California. My name is Steve Martin, host of MacBook Studio. And today we're going to look at motion and mocha. Mocha? Motion and mocha. Well, you know, we've, we've talked on the show before about integration of motion and other applications. Like uh, Cinema 4D. Like Cinema 4D. Yeah, so this is along the same lines. Is it, it's where you can bring more power to motion, or if you're already a mocha user, how you can consider motion as part of your workflow, because motion gives you this real-time compositing environment for uh, taking shots that you may have tracked or rotoed in mocha. And I just wanted to show an example of something from Motion where um, Mocha can kind of augment the capabilities of Motion. Should we? All right. right. So we're going to talk a little bit about what tracking is. Yeah, and, exactly. What, right. what this the whole tracking idea is. So here, here I have a shot of this phone. I'll, I'll play this little shot, and it's a handheld shot of of a phone sitting on a table. That's Nothing your new iPhone 4S. That is my iPhone 4S because I had to replace my other one. <laughs> yes, yes, I did. Um, and there it is. And I want to put something on the screen. Okay. Now, you can do this in motion without any third-party tools uh, on a shot like this with no problem. Uh, and I actually have it a shot here um, that I've used the match move behavior here. So I've got this shot that I want to put in to uh, that screen. And I've applied a match move behavior, and I've pinned it. I'll click the little checkbox to turn it on. And you can see I've pinned it to the corners, and all I did is, is really drag those down to those corners and hit the Analyze button. And it actually created all the keyframes frame, mm -hmm. for each yes. and every one of those yeah, corner points. It generated that tracking data, so yeah. if I play now, uh, you'll see just so when, you don't have to watch me actually do it, but it just tracks right to it. And it can be a little hard to see with those, I'll now, click off of it. Now, can I ask you something? I, you yeah. know, I'm, I don't do a lot of tracking, but does it really help that those corners that you're tra using tracking points were high contrast because you got the white phone and then those and then you got kind of the darker corners? Yeah. Does that help? When you when you're tracking, you definitely want something that's uh, a very clear contrast that that it's trying to as it's moving, you want to see a difference. A corner of something is great. So screens are often a, a good thing. Tracking candidates. This particular kind of track is a corner pin track. And um, as opposed to something where you're not actually trying to, to pin something to the corners, like you want to do a, a billboard or a poster. Or there's some or, perspective. Or, yeah, or a, or a screen where there could be some perspective. And you can see the type here in the heads-up display set to four corners versus a transformation, which may just be um, a sign that's not pinned. Or, or you just want to track like a talking bubble to somebody who's walking along or sure. something like that. But this, is, this has got a lot more going on. And in my experience, motion can have a tough time with corner pinning shots that uh, aren't sort of the right kind of shots. And this shot works well, because it's got some camera movement and the camera's tilting a little bit, but it, Motion does a very nice job of tracking it. Now, I want to look at a very uh, different kind of shot than that, that, that's a little more challenging. So we're going to go in here and take a look at this shot. And this is actually a longer shot, so I'm going to go out, drag out to the end of it here. Right about there, set an out point. So I'll play this shot. You went out and of focus. Exactly. And so you're going to tell me Mocha's going to be able to track that with the out of focus. Well, of that. that's the thing. See, this camera, it goes way out of focus and it shifts off the screen. And these yeah. are things that, that drive uh, the, the match move behavior in motion berser Crazy. berserka. Couldn't, yeah. Can't handle it. Yeah, berserka. It, just, it so, implodes on itself. In fact, if I, if I turn on the, the, the clip that I've tracked and I've got match move behaviors turned on here, let me stop playback. Shall I, I actually use two here to demonstrate the, um, you can see them down here in the timeline. So at the beginning, I'm tracked to the shot. And as I go forward, when it goes out of focus, it's, it's like, just, it's wow, like, wow, where, it's what's like, going where on, am right? I? Which it's is like, kind of the expected. I'm out of here. Right. Uh -huh. And then, it, then when the camera moves, when the shot moves out of the frame, same kind of thing. Here we are, we're moving out of frame, and it, it doesn't like it. Now, there are some tools in motion to do offsetting track and things, but I've just found that most times I can't get there right. with a shot like this. This is a difficult shot. So enter Mocha. And uh, Mocha does a lot of things. Let me just... I just now, you're to, not, you just want to do a whole new interface. Yeah, so I'm going to go there. I just want to show the website okay. so you can see what I'm talking about. It's a company called Imagineer Systems. The product I'm using here is called Mocha Pro, and it does all kind of visual effects, rotoscoping and tracking, and it's a very deep app. But the thing about it is uh, I'm working with, I think it's 2.6.2 .2 right now. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, at NEB, they're releasing a version 3. Uh, and I don't know if this will be out before or after right. NAB in April. But it can't be that but there's a version different. three yeah. but uh, essentially that should actually thing. sort of take it to the next step. But um, 
basically, it looks a little intimidating. It looks a little co like color to me in a way. A lot of really tiny buttons. Um, and uh, it's deep, okay? Yeah. But just to do a simple track, all you do is choose a new project, file new project, and then when you do that, you import your clip, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's all I've done. I said file new project, I imported my clip, and then um, the key tool is this little spline tool called the X-spline layer tool. You click it, and all I'm gonna do is click to draw a big sloppy um, kind of Bezier box. Bezier box around this thing, and it does not have to be perfect. You're just getting a general, the, the tracker, technology in this application is really pretty phenomenal. That's all I'm doing, that's it. Uh, and from there, the only thing you might consider, down at the bottom it says the minimum number of pixels used, and if you crank that number up, it will, it'll take longer to do the track. But, but more will, accurate. More accurate, right. right. And then if you do have some perspective change, you may wanna check that box, okay? There's obviously a lot more to it, but for this track, that's all I had to do. So then I just click, this is a little track forward button right here and you'll see it's gonna to start to chug through. And this took a maybe about five minutes to track when I, when I did it. It's, right now I've set it up as pretty high number, right. but you can see that kind of is gonna move along with it and we're not gonna watch the whole track happen, but this does a track. Afterwards, you may need to do a little bit of tweaking. It's very easy to go in if there's some particular thing you need to tweak and you can test it. You can throw in a little test graphic to see if it worked, okay? The cool thing is once it's done, I'm just gonna stop it under the file menu you can choose export tracking data. And you can see there's all kinds of other things you can export as well. But if I choose export tracking data, I've got an option. Yes, there's a Final Cut option, but that's uh, not current. But what I want is uh, Final Cut Motion. Final Cut Motion Corner Pin right there. Right. Motion Corner Pin. So it's going to export a motion project. A .motn file. A .motn, right. So I'm going to cancel that because what it exports is this guy right here. Uh, let me just turn this one on and turn the, the motion, one inside motion off. So here is what it exports. It exports this, let me move the playhead back so we can see the whole shot again. It exports this surface, let me turn uh, the video clip. It exports this surface that's tracked right to your, um, your video clip. Now obviously that surface doesn't blur right. um, because it's just, it's a generator. It, it took one of motion's color solids and it threw it in there, but look at this. <laughs> that's that's amazing. It just tracks right to it, yeah. right? It, 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 it's so it's like that's cool if you really want a blue, uh, you know, rectangle there. But if you want something else there, all you do is you use a match move behavior, but not as a corner pinning. Now, all you do is you say, I want to match this this shot of of Annie exactly to that surface, and I don't have to corner pin. I don't have to do anything. As long the key is, this is what I learned. The key is that the, the, the aspect ratio of this clip and the frame rate need to match the project. Right. Okay, that's, a, that's one important caveat. So this project is 1920 by 1080. This clip is 1920 by 1080. If it's not, you're gonna have a problem. Okay, okay but assuming it Did is- Did you read that in the documentation? You just scanned that through like, you no, know, I, banging I, that on was the wall. Some, that was banging on the wall, wow. yeah. That was banging on the wall. But what I did, you can see, so I just, I matched move it, and all you do is add the match move. Um, you don't have to do any, any setting anything. You don't have to analyze. It just works. You just set it to four corners and it works. There's no analyzing. And then I added a, Ga a Gaussian blur that you can see down here in the timeline. I added some keyframes to, to make blur it blur at the it, same to blur time. It. Wow. Yeah. So now if I play that through, I've got this shot. And actually, I should turn off the, the surface, sorry, yeah. back there so you don't see that. It's going and that'll too, blur. Too well, it's, it's, it's trying to load yeah. all this in. I'll show you the, the final movie as well that plays at real time. Okay, and it moves right off the screen. <laughs> so it, it's a great way to handle some more complex kind of tracking issues. And anybody who's, you know, screen replacement's really common. Yeah, it's really very, common. very if common. People watching the TV screens, computer screens, laptops, PDAs, what have you. It's a constant the thing. screens you, or, everywhere. Or, or just, or posters, right? You've got some... Um, um, or logos. Somebody's wearing a logo you need, to, you can blur it out, but you can also replace it. Or there's a, a shot you're outside and you can't show that particular sure. shot. So really interesting way to uh, handle tracking. And then maybe you're, net, you're a Mocha user and never considered using Motion, but Motion gives you a, a real-time compositing tool combined with, with uh, Mocha is an interesting combination. It sounds like it's a lot, lot faster. So where would someone go to if they didn't know Motion? 
So if you want to, <laughs> as yeah, if I didn't know. <laughs> as if you didn't know. So RippleTraining.com, we've got we've got m multiple trainings on motion. So we've got introductory trainings, more advanced trainings, and, and a new one out on Mastering Motion's camera. And then for information about uh, Mocha, I would check out their website. How much the, is a Mocha? Did it say like? Yeah, it depends on the version you get. Um, the highest end version without an upgrade price is like fifteen hundred dollars. So you, it, it can get up there. Um, but if your upgrading is less expensive, and then there's there's one that ships with After Effects that you can get. So there's right. different versions. You kind of got to check it out. And I don't know what will be happening come the uh, come the update. Yeah. Okay. So it, it, there's a cost involved. But if you're doing real tracking. This uh, is I a get that, great that, solution That would for just it. save you hours of yep. work. Yep. I, I can see how to pay for itself in one job. Anyway, we want to thank you for watching another episode of Mac Break Studio. We'll catch you next time.